Let's bring in Dale Carpenter. He is a law professor at the Dedman School of Law at Southern Methodist University. Professor Carpenter, thanks very much for joining us. What is your take on that pressure campaign? Did the Trump legal team break any laws by trying to push the vice president not to count lawful votes? The pressure campaign was unprecedented in American history, and it quite possibly did uh, amount to a violation of at least a couple of federal laws and possibly District of Columbia law as well. We'll see. To your point, Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney, the daughter of another vice president, uh, says former President Trump, quote, likely violated two criminal statutes, end quote, leading up to uh, what happened on January 6th. What, what exactly, though, is she alluding to? Well, I think she's alluding to a couple of federal statutes. One of them is a law that deals with obstruction of an official proceeding. That would be, in this case, the January 6th counting of the electoral votes and the certification of Joe Biden as the winner. The second would be possibly a criminal conspiracy to defraud the United States, including by interfering with the election certification and by spreading false information about the results of the U.S. presidential election. Those are at least a couple of federal laws that may have been violated here. Help us understand, though, sort of the idea of at the end of this investigation, legally speaking here, um, there is also another investigation uh, into what actually took place with respect to those who entered the Capitol and entered the Capitol grounds on that day. Um, can you just uh, break down for us the different tracks here? Because I think it can be confusing for people who may wonder, ultimately, is it up to this committee to decide whether the former president can be charged? Uh, it may be a bit of a thorny kind of uh, a sense that some folks might have. Yeah, so there are at least two tracks involved here. So one of them is the proceeding in the House of Representatives and the investigations that's going on. The House does not have authority to charge anybody with a crime or to prosecute a crime. The House might be able to refer a matter to the Justice Department for prosecution of a crime, like a crime committed by the president or some of his aides. So that's a possibility but they can't themselves actually charge a crime or prosecute a crime. That's for another body of the government. Uh, what's also happening, though, at the same time, is that the Department of Justice is investigating hundreds of cases and charging hundreds of people with actually storming the United States Capitol. And they actually are being uh, um, tried or might be tried for um, obstruction of that vote certification. So the question would be, if the Justice Department is willing to prosecute the ground troops in that effort to reverse the 2020 election results, will they be willing to prosecute the generals who conceived and then executed the strategy of re reversing the election? And so just in our last few minutes, Professor, what then would be the potential worst outcome for former President Trump if, in fact, it is determined at a later time that he did violate these two federal statutes you mentioned earlier? Well, the worst outcome for him, I think, would be, number one, that it, there would be a, an investigation by the Justice Department, maybe resulting from some of these revelations that the House is uh, producing, um, and number two, that he actually be tried for these crimes, then number three, convicted, and number four, these crimes carry penalties. They are felonies. So uh, this could, could be very, potentially very serious for the president, former president. High stakes indeed, Professor Del Carpenter. Thank you very much. You bet.